Dylan, who we prayed for for a good while here, we were praying for a healing on this side, but his healing came on the other side. And that was difficult for all, all of us who were praying for him, and most difficult for his parents. I want us in a few moments, we're going to pray for his parents that are suffering such a great loss today. Joan's brother passed Friday night uh, up in Virginia. We were there, and uh, he was unresponsive, but sometimes you got to understand the hearing is the last to go. They're, they can hear things, that, and they can't respond. We had a prayer for him, and I got all the siblings around the bed, Joan's brothers, it was amazing, in incredible <clears throat> harmony, we sang all of the verses to Amazing Grace and had a prayer with him. And just not too long later, he just slipped out to the other side. And that's the way it should be. It's a good way to go. And we're rejoicing. Joan pretty much emotionally and physically kind of wiped out a little bit. So she stayed back today. But she sent me, told me to do what I gotta do. And I'm here to do it. But I want us to pray for Nancy Whalen. We're not able to have much contact. Families asked us to sort of, so she can recover some strength and they can determine what her situation is. We're, we're not to trying to contact her because of the family's request till she's able to respond uh, maybe in a better way. So, um, Becky, as you're coming to the piano, uh, I want us to have a special prayer even right now for Dylan's family that are suffering such a great loss this week. For Joan and her family and for, especially for Nancy Whalen. Um, we sure desire for her to continue among us and, and we want to believe for that today. George, would you mind leading us in prayer for these sp specific needs, if you would? Lord, we thank you that you have given us privilege and honor to be able to come before your throne. Yes. And we do that right now but with a heavy heart and sorrow. And you know, you know the pain we experience because you came and you wept over Jerusalem. You wept because your friend died. Lord, you know what we're experiencing right now. We lift up Dylan's family, dear God, and ask yes. blessings yes. upon them. We ask, dear God, that you would bring your, your peace yes. right yes. now their heart yes. and comfort. And I pray that you would bring those around that are close to them comfort them in this hour. Yes, Lord. And we pray for our Sister Joan's family. Lord, as they have experienced their loss this well, for God. That they would know your peace and love during this difficult time. And that you would gather around them those that love them so much. Thank you. To share in this burden and this loss. You called, you called us to come and share these Thank things you. with one another. And Lord, we lift up Nancy, Waylon. Lord, even though we don't know quite what's going on, it doesn't matter. You do. 
Lord's heart and labor. Yes, Lord. Lord, we ask that you minister to her spirit. Yes, God. During this time, mm -hmm. we ask. It's our desire for her total healing, dear Lord. You said that we can ask that. And so we do that. That you would return her to us, Lord, in good health. She's been such a blessing to numerous, numerous, numerous people. She has been faithful to serve. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes. Lord, in a way that's been an example to many. And has sacrificed much to serve. So we ask, Lord, for her total healing. Yes, Lord. We ask for your presence even right now. May she know that you are with her and ministering. Lord, even ministry. Send ministering angels to be with her. Yes, Lord. It's always difficult to lose someone or to have someone who is so sick that it's difficult for them to communicate and respond. Lord, you know these things and we're thankful Yes, Lord. you know what we're experiencing, what the families are experiencing. So, Lord, we pray for your ministering spirit to be with them. Yes, Lord. And that you be glorified in all of this. And your name be lifted up. In Christ's blessed name, amen. Everybody say amen. Yes. You know, when Joan's brother passed on Friday night, he had lived a full life and he was ready to go. And so you can rejoice in that. But when a young person like Dylan who didn't have that opportunity, it's very difficult. Very difficult for Joan. Joan's brother, another brother, lost his son about this time of the year, 12 years old, in an ATV accident. He was standing by the bed as well, singing. And it's been it's taken years for him and his wife to, to be able to find joy and be able to rejoice. It almost tore them apart. But somehow God is able to mend their hearts. But today we want to focus our message today on the Lamb, the Lamb of God. Let's sing this. Dottie Rambo wrote this song many years ago, but it was a well-known chorus of worship. Very short, but very beautiful. Behold the Lamb. Behold the Lamb. Slain from the fountain. Father, wonder 
of who you are. We give you honor, glory, and praise in this house today. We do take a moment in time in worship to behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and our sins even more so. And everybody declared and said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Becky. I've done many messages surrounding Christmas in my 60 plus years and, and I've always kind of wanted to do something I'm doing today and I have never done a message quite like this. And it, it just reveals how inexhaustible God's Word is. That you can preach all your life hundreds of messages about Christmas or Thanksgiving and then the inexhaustible Word of God inspires something that you've never quite done before. The baby tender yet mighty, Mary's lamb. Mary had a little lamb. The rhyme goes. In fact, I, I ask Siri, Siri where the rhyme came from, and it's said that it came from uh, in, uh, from a lady named Mary in Massachusetts many, many years ago. Now, Wikipedia sometimes don't always have the right answer, but <coughs> that's what it was claimed about the nursery rhyme. But we're taking off of that a little bit. Mary's lamb, the lamb of God, who taketh away the sin of the world. How many are grateful for the Lamb of God who's come to take away the sin, our sins? And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. And she gave birth to her first child, firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in a blanket. One translation puts it and laid him in a stall made for cattle, or the King James calls it a manger. There are so many Old Testament types and shadows that cast a long shadow hundreds of years into the future, thousand years. And the, 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 the shadow of the Passover is something that cast, that God instituted, that cast a long shadow all the way to Mary's Lamb, all the way to the understanding of the Incarnation, all the way to the city of Bethlehem, all the way there, cast that shadow. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and said, Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it, according to the number of the persons According to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. Each home, each neighbor is to be covered, is to have what they need for this Passover night. My, my, my family and my household made it very clear to me when I was young. And they said it sort of this way, in different ways they would say it. My father would look me straight in the eye. He said, son, this house is going to serve the Lord. As long as you're under my roof and I'm paying the bill, you'll be expected to go to church. And he would say, for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. There ain't going to be no question about it. 
we're going to serve the Lord. He made it real plain. When I saw the sternness in his face, I knew he meant it. We were going to serve the Lord. It's the way it was. Let, him, let every household, according to the house of his father, a lamb for every household. And the household that is too small for the lamb, check on your neighbor next to his house and take according to the number of the persons in that house, according to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. How many are glad that you have put the Lord has made it possible for us to put the blood of Christ on the doorpost of our hearts and of our lives upon the lintel of the house where and they eat it and they shall eat of the flesh on that night roasted in fire with unleavened bread bitter herbs they shall eat so you shall eat in haste for it is the Lord's Passover. Passover was originally a feast for those about to be delivered by their direct obedience to the covenant God. It served as a final dynamic proof of God's presence and protective care. How many are glad for God's providence and his presence and his protective care over us. Then later, as a memorial for those who had been delivered. A feast of hope and life. I want to tell you today, Jesus Christ, the Passover Lamb, is a festival of, we give praise, we give honor and glory. It's a feast of hope and life. The Passover represents deliverance and new beginnings. How many are glad that you've had a new beginning? And you've been delivered. I used to love, I used to love to hear Carmen saying, I've been delivered by the blood of the Lamb. Deliverance has come. The bitter herb have traditionally been regarded as representing the bitterness of Egyptian bondage. Bitter herbs, according to tradition and commentary, has been dandelions or horseradish. The Passover meal was to be eaten in haste, ready to move when God commanded them to leave. How many knows we got to always be ready to move when God says move? Ready to act when God says act. Passover was a judgment against the gods of Egypt. It was the final statement of God's power. The partaking of the lamb and the blood on the lintel and the doorpost was their only protection and it was their only way out. If you wanted protection, if you wanted out of bondage of Egypt, Egypt representing sin and bondage. The lamb was the only way. Come on. If you can eat, if you can't eat it all, don't waste it. Share it. Don't keep it all for yourself. Can you pick up some symbolism here? Don't keep it for yourself. Don't waste it. Share it. Because it will get your neighbor out of Egypt too. Come on. I'm going to tell you. The lamb is the only way out. The blood shall never lose its power. Those kids in Teen Challenge. They come to know right off the bat. If they want out of bondage. It's going to take the lamb to get them out. Our lamb. The lamb of God is the only way out. There is no other way. And here the Israelites, in their obedience to God, they killed the perfect lamb. 
They put the blood on the doorpost and the lentil. They eat in haste. Don't keep it for yourself. Think about your neighbor. Think about your family members. The only way they're going to get out is by the Lamb. The Lamb is our way out. Turn to the Lamb. And some might say, this is, okay, you're ready? Some might say, how is that little Lamb going to get me out of here? And you know what the truth is? People today still say that. How is that little lamb going to make a difference? How is that little lamb going to save me? How is that little lamb going to get me out of here? How is that little lamb going to free me from bondage? I want to tell you that blood on the doorpost and the little, that little lamb is a mighty lamb. He's the mighty God has come to save us. And, and I still like it said today, the blood shall never lose its power. Can you say amen? It's time, it's past time for us to share the Lamb. And it came to pass at midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on his throne, like sitting on your throne is going to exempt you from something? I don't think so. Listen, I'll tell you what, it won't make a difference when the lamb is on the doorpost, the blood, it makes all the difference. I you know, I, if I told this or not, I was asked to preach in Colonial Heights, Virginia. I was at the I, first time I've been to this church, pretty large church, because they want to consider me to come there. Colonial Heights. Our first time there, pretty large church. I'm up preaching and I'm sensing something, something's going on. I, I just know in my spirit, I'm feeling something not quite right. And I have, I have an altar call. I wasn't going to do that because I'm first time there. I was just going to do what I was there for to preach. And I'm, you know. But I felt like I had to have an altar call. And I challenged people to come down. And this lady came from the balcony. Little did I know, she'd been coming for the last 30 days. She was a witch. And she was putting hexes on anybody who was preaching there every Sunday. She was sitting up right in front of me, right directly in the balcony, looking straight at me. I thought something was I thought something was going on in my spirit. I don't know whether she came down to challenge me or to be prayed for. I don't know which one. But she looked at me when she came, she came with some others, right in front of me. And I knew, man, when she got close, I knew I was. Man, no K and W for me today. It was going to be a long haul. I laid hands on her, and she fell to the floor and began to move like a snake. No joke. We were there from twelve o'clock to three thirty in the afternoon doing exorcism on that woman. Man, I wanted to go to K and W a whole lot more than do that. But we, but I want to tell you. God is capable of taking care of what needs to be taken care of. No matter what it is, the Lamb and the blood still has power over the enemies. And, and I'll tell you, for three and a half hours, and about 35 people of the people of the church stayed with me, which I was, they stayed with me around the altar there to be able to get deliverance. You could not believe the difference on that woman's face and her voice changed during the time we were praying for her. And after she was delivered, she was a totally, completely different countenance, different person, different voice, different everything. She was totally delivered by the power of God. Come on. The blood shall never lose its power. 
But when the, day, when, the, when, the, when the judgment of God came, it didn't matter who was on a throne or who was in a dungeon. It didn't make any difference. And it came to pass at midnight that the Lord struck at the, at the firstborn of the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the, to the firstborn of the captive who was in a dungeon. And all the firstborn of livestock. So Pharaoh rose in the night, he and his servants and all the Egyptians. And Pharaoh said to the Israelite, Serve your God as you have said. Take your flocks and your herds and leave and be gone. But then it's so funny at the end. He said, And bless me also. I mean, I think he must have got, come to the understanding that the God of the Israelites was the true God. Too bad he didn't stay with that. He wouldn't have got baptized later in the Red Sea. Pharaoh said, go and serve the Lord as you have said. Take your flocks, your, your herds, and be gone. Some say it could have been 1.5 to 2 million in the Exodus. Pharaoh was directly touched by the final plague. He requested that the Hebrews leave, and then he asked for a blessing. At this point, he knew that the God of the Hebrews was God, and that he and the gods of Egypt were defeated. Have you noticed that God is God? And everything else and every other being will bow before him. Mary's lamb is our only way out. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, some say approximately 80 miles, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, who was great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in the King James Version, swaddling clothes. And I've had kids ask me, what is swaddling clothes? And unique terminology. And laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. That's found in Luke 2, 4 through 7. We didn't put that on there. Luke 2, 4 through 7. It's interesting, the end spoken of here in Luke 2 was spoken of in Jeremiah 41, 17. It was an end that had been around not long. But the end was the poorest of the poor. It wasn't, it wasn't the Hilton. It wasn't even a day's end. It was just walls and a roof. That was about it. But even that, there was no room for them. I put together a Christmas prayer for all of us and our families today. May Mary's little lamb always be your way out of whatever you're in, whatever the situation is. Mary's little lamb is our way out of sin and bondage, sickness and death. May the dying Savior's love inspire you. 2 Corinthians 5, 14, the love of Christ inspires and compels us. His love made me do it. Come on, made me do it. His love compels us, inspires us. May the dying Savior's love inspire you. May an ascending Savior's blessing enrich you. When he ascended, he gave, he took prisoners, he took names, took prisoners, but he gave gifts unto men. Aren't you glad he gave gifts unto men? Okay, may Mary's little lamb be your way out always. May the dying Savior's love inspire and compel you. May the ascending Savior's blessing enrich you and may the constant Savior's ministry aid you. He is the priest 
and he's forever after the priest of Melchizedek. His priesthood is unending. Somebody say amen. May the living Savior's word sanctify you. Ephesians 5, 25. Christ loves the church and he gave himself for the church. May the living Savior's word sanctify you. May the seated Savior's acceptance rest you. He offered up sacrifice for one time. And the Bible says in Hebrews verse 12, then he sat down. How many knows that you can rest because he rested? He offered sacrifice, verse 12 of chapter 10 of Hebrews, and then he sat down. May the Savior's presence cheer you. Isaiah 41 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. Fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed, I will be with you. How am glad He is with us always to the ends of the earth? May the joyful Savior's joy. Strengthen you. And I'm gonna I'm changed that we made a got the wrong. It should be John 16, 22. John 16, 22. May the joyful Savior's joy strengthen you. Your heart shall rejoice, and your joy, no man shall take it from you. I'm here glad that no man shall take it from us. And then may the powerful Savior Spirit. May the powerful Savior Spirit use you. And you know Acts 1 8, we shall receive power after the Spirit has come upon us. And we shall be witnesses in Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. And then last, may the coming Savior's return attract you. Behold, I come quickly. And my rewards come with me. How many is looking for that? Yes. Mary's lamb. Tender, baby, yet mighty. Mighty to save. Mighty to deliver. The mighty God. I'm very glad we serve the mighty God. We, need, we, have got to, we have got to continually remind ourselves that the people that we love dearly, the people next door, the people we see in the grocery store, the Lamb is the only way out. We've got to, we've got to remind ourselves that. We can do all the council talk. We can send our hand. We can send them there. But the Lamb is the only way. We'll sing that one more time and then we're going to sing Emmanuel, maybe in the key of C after that. Behold the Lamb. Be
to be more, a lot more than a bless me club. If we have partaken of the Lamb, we've got to share it. We can't waste it. Neighbors next door, they want to get out too, maybe. And the Lamb is the only way out. The church, God's house, has got to share the Lamb with those who are lost in bondage to Egypt sin and death we can't stand by and waste listen this time of the year Christmas holiday time is the best time for you to leverage your faith do you understand what I mean people may be more open this time of the year to leverage your faith, your testimony than any other time. It may be the time to reach people with the Lamb than any other time. So use this opportunity. Use it. They're playing the gospel songs everywhere. Some of the old hymns of, of Christmas are being played. And the gospel is all in those songs. Leverage. Leverage your faith and testimony now during this time. It's the best possibility to use your testimony because because the Lamb is the only way out. Share it. Don't waste it. Share it with the neighbors because they, want, they need to get out too. Father, I thank you for this church. I thank you for these wonderful people. Help us to be mindful of this. Help us to be mindful Others need to know. Others need the Lamb too. We speak this today for everyone here. And for everyone that has loved ones and friends and co-workers that desperately want to get out too, but they can't get out unless they have the Lamb. Speak to our hearts, God. Take away that lethargy that, that binds us up. Father, make this church a healing center, a restoration center where people can get out of bondage to a new life, to a new beginning. Speak that to our hearts today in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, one more time, Emmanuel. His name is called Emmanuel. God with us, revealed in us. His name is called Emmanuel. Desperately need the rain. Amen. God love you and bless you. Be careful going home.